Parallel computing operates on the principle that large problems can often be divided into smaller ones, which are then solved concurrently. A frequently used programming solution today, but it wasn't always. That was before David Cook. David J. Cook is one of the industry's most influential figures in parallel computing, especially in the development of productivity tools for parallel programming. Over the past four decades, Dr. Cook has influenced a wide range of areas, including architecture design, compiler technology, programming languages, and algorithms. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, David Cook was involved with the design of the ELIAC-4, regarded by many as the first true supercomputer. From 1986 to 1993, in his role as director of the Center for Supercomputing Research and Development at the University of Illinois, Dr. Cook led the construction of CEDAR, 32 processor landmark supercomputer. Cook and his students built the Paraphrase System, one of the first working compilers that performed automatic detection of parallelism for vector and parallel machines. It included one of the first systematic data dependence analyzers. He and Uptal Banerjee developed and implemented the first sophisticated dependence test and distributed the source code to other researchers. Their work led to increased development of techniques for the automatic detection of parallelism. During his time as founder and chairman of Cook and & Associates, and later as an Intel Fellow, David Cook made several important contributions to software tools and language designed for parallelism. Just a few of these contributions are the development of program analysis and transformation techniques to find parallelism, computer design, multiprocessor interconnection network design, and influential software and productivity tools, including the essential KAI translator and the KAI CAP Pro tool for anomaly detection. The scope of David Cook's influence and innovation are nearly impossible to measure. Every compiler in use today incorporates techniques pioneered by Dr. Cook. In this era of multi-core architectures and exascale supercomputers, his work is now more important than ever, as programmers must continue to adapt software to use new hardware effectively. It is difficult to imagine today's computer architectures without the influence of Dr. David J. Cook, an innovator in the truest sense of the word and a deserving recipient of the 2011 Computer Pioneer Award. In his career, Dr. Cook has taught, mentored, and graduated more than 25 PhD students, many of whom have gone on to also make major contributions to the field. These past students represent an elite group of faculty, writers, research specialists, and industry leaders. David's influence will be felt for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Cook. Thank you very much. I, uh, I certainly appreciate the award and I'm honored and pleased to have uh, been this year's recipient. <clears throat> I uh, also would like to thank, uh, of course, many colleagues. We, everyone who's been up here tonight has stood on the shoulders of many giants, whether they're graduate students or colleagues in uh, academia or, uh, or in industry. So I'm very, uh, very thankful for all the great associates I've had for the last um, 40 or more years. Of course, when I got this award, I was a little bit shocked to think of myself as a pioneer. I, uh, that <coughs> usually seems to be someone who's uh, been uh, someone who's in the history books. I took a look at my back in the mirror and saw that the arrows, a few arrows, are still stuck in there. So I think. I probably do qualify as a pioneer. Certainly recognized a lot of the old timers uh, on, on these um, photos tonight. I didn't recognize Utpal Banerjee, however. I think uh, that must have been a Google search error, <laughs> just for the record. Um, I'd like to spend a few minutes, though, talking about pioneers 
um, and what they might offer the world because we're not necessarily all over the hill. Several people refer to themselves as being old. And Diane's point was actually one of the ones I wanted to make. In other words, um, once it's a little like being a historian, I think. Once you've lived that long and worked on that many problems, um, you've learned a lot of things, and uh, sometimes they're not so hard to uh, dredge out and apply. In my own case, after joining Intel for a few years, I realized that computer design uh, from ILLIAC 4 to, to now, has an, there's an awful lot of intuition, lots of fingers in the wind. Uh, there's nothing very, there are no fundamental equations to describe the hardware and software running together, et cetera, et cetera. So I actually dug back into some work I did uh, 30 years ago or so, uh, about five years back, and have been, uh, have been amazed by how much I left on the table in some papers I wrote then. And uh, I've, I've started a new project and, and uh, done some theoretical work and some tools implementation that really seems very interesting. So I, I think the main message I have is that uh, whether you're a pioneer or on your way to being a pioneer, remember all the things that didn't work and did work and uh, keep them in mind as you go forward because there, there are lots of challenging problems and they, and they just keep coming around. So that's my summary of, uh, of being a pioneer. Thank you very much. Thank you.